Hi everyone. Uh, today for United in Recovery, we're completing our November message series on gratitude as we prepare for Thanksgiving a little later this week. And we've been looking at how gratitude affects our recovery and how if we get to a place in our lives without gratitude, uh, we find that that's generally a place of entitlement and resentment and unchecked entitlement and resentment leads us back into compulsive behavior, unhealthy living, and addiction. And so we're, we're looking at how can we make gratitude a habit, not just something that occasionally we feel emotionally, but a habit within our lives. And so uh, we've gone through the last two weeks looking at the story of Jesus and the 10 lepers who he healed. I want to look at the story again, and then I want to give an idea for how we take what we've learned about the importance of gratitude uh, and we move from knowing about it to creating a habit of gratitude. So here's the story. If you've been with us the last two weeks, this will be a nice refresher and reminder. If you haven't, this is one of the, the great, great stories uh, ever told, ever lived. So on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Okay, let's dig into that, the great story from, from Luke 17. Jesus heals these 10 lepers. Leprosy made you an outcast. You weren't considered ritually, ritually clean. They were worried that you might give it to someone else. So you had to live in a leper colony outside the village you, you couldn't really have a job. You were condemned to a life of isolation and poverty. And to be healed from leprosy was, was more than anybody could imagine. There was no known cure at the time. Sometimes it seemingly miraculously happened, but most of the time it was kind of a life sentence or a death sentence when you came down with leprosy. And now here these uh, men were, all 10 of them, that a new lease on life Jesus had given them. Nine of them go on their way, we assume they're thankful for their new lease on life, but, but they never come back to say thank you to Jesus. And one does, one does, and he says to that one, get up and go on your way, your faith has made you well. And isn't that interesting that he says, your faith has made you well. Realize that Jesus healed this man and the others uh, without necessarily saying that he was doing so because they had such faith, right? He healed every one of those 10 guys, regardless of the state of their faith. So I wonder if he means something different when he says your faith has made you well than simply that you've been healed of your leprosy. Uh, I wonder if well's much deeper. For instance, uh, we know that um, it's one thing to be dry, it's another thing to be sober, right? And being dry means you just haven't had the chance to drink. You haven't had the chance to indulge in your compulsive behavior. Being sober uh, means uh, that you're living a different way. You're living a more honest way. You're living a more, more thankful way. So I think he's talking about this man being made well spiritually uh, as well as physically. And maybe some of the others who failed to give thanks, uh, they got the physical blessing, uh, but they left without the spiritual blessing, the, the, the greatest blessing. Now, this man got that blessing. He, he was truly made well because of his gratitude, and not just because he felt it. Every one of them had to feel it, some probably more than others, but because he expressed it, and he did so immediately. Did you know that when somebody does something nice for you, the quicker you say thank you, the more it means to them? So, for instance, if somebody gives you something, and you write them a thank you note the next day and put it in the mail, even if it's two or three sentences, it will mean more to them than if you wait three months and then write them a whole page long uh, note. Because the fact that you did it immediately says something. 
uh, it, it shows how, how grateful you were. For instance, some of us, we've probably done something nice for someone, uh, and we get a thank you note so, so long later that we think, gosh, I think they wrote this because they thought they had to. I don't, I don't really think they wanted to. Look how long they procrastinated, right? There's something about saying thank you right away immediately uh, that helps us uh, in embrace gratitude as a habit, right? That's what we want to do. We want to learn how to embrace gratitude as a habit by learning to say thank you immediately. Now, this is really, as we've talked in previous weeks, for our recovery, uh, step, um, gratitude has a lot to do with step 10, step 11, uh, where we're continuing uh, the kind of the maintenance steps of, of our th- faith, keeping us on the right track. And particularly, I think the idea of saying that we're grateful immediately has to do with step 10. Now I want to remind you of step 10. Step 10 is continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Continue to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Now, I think that's so important for all of us that we continue to take personal inventory. How are we doing? That we become self-aware that when there are things that are wrong, we admit it so that those things don't begin to run our lives. Uh, But then I think there's more to personal inventory than just figuring out have we done anything wrong. And interestingly enough, if you make your personal inventory just about figuring out what you've done wrong because that's the stuff you have to promptly admit, you know what will happen? You'll come to dread your personal inventory and you'll begin to shy away from it. And in fact, it won't be quite uh, honest enough because honesty is not just honesty about things that aren't quite right. It's also honesty about the things we have to be thankful for, right? So I like to think of this. Now, what I'm going to share with you, uh, that what we just shared was step 10 of the 10 of the 12 steps originally articulated by Alcoholics Anonymous. I want to share with you step 10 and a half. And I want to say that this step has never been articulated by Alcoholics Anonymous. To my knowledge, it's never been articulated by anyone but me. So I don't want to, I don't want to assign some authority to it that it doesn't really have. Maybe somebody else came up with this before and I didn't know about it and we kind of were thinking along the same lines. However, here's step 10 and a half. Continued to take personal inventory and when we were blessed, promptly gave thanks for it. Okay? When we were blessed, promptly gave thanks for it. Think about the difference that would make. If as part of our personal inventory that we take daily, that we think about not just the bad things, not just the things we need to change or make amends for, but we think about the things that have blessed us, and not just that we think about them, but we make an effort to immediately give thanks. And sometimes that giving thanks means thanking somebody who made it possible. Sometimes it means thanking God in prayer and walking throughout our lives acknowledging this was a gift. I didn't earn it. It was given. And when we walk that way, it changes everything about how we see the world, uh, how we see ourselves, and what we think we need. Uh, And it teaches us that a lot of that stuff, substances, compulsive behaviors that we think we need to cope, we don't when we realize how much we have to be thankful for. So I hope that this Thanksgiving, you will continue to take personal inventory. And when you are blessed, we'll promptly give thanks for it. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.